everyone's day is off to a magical start. Welcome to Disney on a Dime. I'm Tan, this is my husband Eric, and we are here to share with you today our thoughts on... Disney transportation. <laughs> Which can be a money saver. Mm -hmm. And this is Disney on the Nine. So we've had a lot of questions about should I rent a car, should I not rent a car. Certainly, especially if you haven't been to Disney a lot and you're staying on property, not renting a car and using the Disney transportation is a great way to save money. Absolutely. However, it is not perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let me first explain what, what is entailed with Disney transportation. Okay. There are obviously Disney resorts. Mm -hmm. Uh, Animal Kingdom Lodge, Grand Floridian, Polynesian, all the value resorts. And from any of those resorts, you can take, it's typically a bus, but there are also boats, but we're mainly gonna talk about buses. You can take a bus to any of the seven themed park areas. Mm -hmm. So that would be the four major theme parks, Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Universal, uh, Hollywood Studios. Yeah, Hollywood Studios, I'm gonna say Universal. Universal. Don't, do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Blizzard Beach and Taco Bell. Water Parks and Disney Springs. And Disney Springs. So the buses will take you back and forth between your hotel and those properties, okay. which works really great 70% mm -hmm. of the time. 30% <laughs> of the time you will run into issues. Right. What are some of the issues you run into? All right, so um, I, an issue that kind of sticks out with me or an example that kind of sticks out with me is when we were staying over at Animal Kingdom Lodge and we were trying to take the bus over to Animal Kingdom. Park, which, which was, is like. It's like a rock a block away. away. <laughs> <laughs> it, some days took up to 45 minutes yeah. for our bus to show up. And a couple of times we are actually even just hopped in the car and drove over. We yeah. waited so long. So the bus system is not perfect. Mm -hmm. um, there are also situations where your bus will share, you will share your bus with another resort, especially in the boardwalk area. So mm -hmm. like this last time we went to Swan Resort, mm -hmm. they used to have a bus stop, but now you have to walk over to the Dolphin. For whatever reason, right. we do not know. Right. And then so with that comes overcrowded buses. You yeah. know what I'm saying? After a long day in the park, you want to get on and have a nice air conditioned seat. But if you're sharing your bus yeah. with, you know, a couple of other resorts, then you will probably end up having to stand, you know, in the aisle. So why are we telling you this? Well, like, why are you, we're not down <laughs> in Disney transportation. There's a couple no. of things you got to think about though. Mm -hmm. Reservations. If you have a fast pass reservation or a dining reservation or a character meet and greet, you don't want to be leaving your hotel 30 minutes ahead of time thinking, oh, I'm going to hop on the bus. Yeah, it's going to be out there be waiting there. on me. Yeah, no. 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 <laughs> it's, like, it's like a bus in a major city. Sometimes it runs great, sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't. Yeah. So give yourself plenty of time. The buses can get crowded if you've got strollers or stuff like that. Just be patient. Yeah. And I think we talked about this on another video. If you've been a bunch of times, you mm -hmm. might want to rent a car. Just, just do the analysis, right? Yeah. Make sure, because sometimes renting a car can be a good thing. But another limitation of the buses, which mm -hmm. they just changed, is currently the way the buses run, you can only go from your resort to a park. Okay. You, you couldn't go from park to park. So in other words, I could take a bus from, let's say, um, let's use a good one, let's mm -hmm. say Wilderness Lodge okay. over to Animal Kingdom. Okay. I could take a bus. Mm -hmm. What I couldn't do was take a bus from Animal Kingdom to Magic Kingdom. You couldn't go from park to park. Okay. Um, and let me pull up my notes here. We have this handy dandy la laptop here today. <laughs> but Disney just added a new express transportation option. We love new. We love new. <laughs> Eric, tell us about it. And let me explain what, what this is for. This is for people that have either annual pass or park hoppers. Park hoppers. <laughs> so when you have an annual pass or a park hopper, what that mm -hmm. means is you can do more than one park in a day. Oh, that's great. So you could go from Animal Kingdom to let's say Magic Kingdom in one day. Mm -hmm. The problem that that created though, we talked about this in one of our other videos is, it's very hard to take transportation from Magic Kingdom mm -hmm. back to your hotel, mm -hmm. back to Animal, that would just take, that could a be a couple of, of hours. That, so you that burn eats a lot up of time. your trip. That eats up your trip with all of that waiting for transportation. So they recently added, and this is only for people that have um, park hopper, or annual passes, mm -hmm. an express transportation option that goes from park to park. It departs every 30 minutes. So they have a quicker schedule mm -hmm. directly from a special location. It starts at 10, but there is a cost. Oh man. If you do a, if you have a single day park hopper and you're only gonna do it for a day, mm -hmm. it's $19 per person. So you wow. buy your ticket, then you add the park hopper option, uh -huh. then you add the transportation option. Wow. So you're adding a lot of So extra. let's say there are five, maybe seven members in your party. $19 each. $19 For each. one day. And keep in mind, you've already paid for your regular park ticket 
on top of the yeah. cost for the park hopper option. So I'm glad you said five people. If you do the math, that's basically an extra $100 for the whole group. Just for the transportation. Yes, five times 19. And if you're park hopping, that means you guys have probably been up and in the parks for several hours. So that means you've eaten maybe a couple of times already in the park. So you spent money on that too. So you have to factor in the cost for the food also, unless you've watched our video on, you know, bringing food into the park and save some money <laughs> there, but wow. And that's the one day ticket. And most people get multi-day tickets. You can get a multi-day in it for up to seven consecutive days for $29 each. Wow. So what is my- That's gonna get kind of expensive. <laughs> so what is my Disney on the dime advice? And I'm glad you just said that. Mm -hmm. Some of this goes back to, we gotta peel back the layer of the onion. Do you really need Park Hopper in the first place? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I, you know, I please leave a comment below. Those of you who have done the Park Hopper yeah. options before, who, you know, we're just now in, into summer. If you and your family are actually planning on doing Park, Hop, Park Hopper, please let us know. Let me know how you do it. Because remember, if you watched our previous videos, our take is it's very difficult because Disney parks are so big now. <sighs> and the crowds are bigger than they used to be. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to have the energy to go I would be exhausted. Park park I'm today. exhausted just thinking about it. I am. Let us know how you guys do it. My advice would be, if, if you absolutely, look, I'm doing park hopper, I don't care what you say, I'm doing park hopper, <laughs> I probably would do this. I probably would go ahead and spend the extra 20, 29 On the new transportation. To take transportation. Okay. If I absolutely, I've just gotta do it, fine. Mm -hmm. But to keep it simple, just don't do it, and you save a lot of money. That's my, that's my two cents. Let us know in the comments what you think. Well, that is it, guys. We hope, as always, that you found this video to be very helpful, very informative. And so, until next time, guys, don't forget to make every day magical.